we're in the Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary in Alpena, Michigan. We're about ready to go out onto Lake Huron and retrieve some sensors and some offshore sinkholes. Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, Lake Erie sit on top of karst geology. What that means is that they're sitting on top of an ancient limestone layer, 400 million years old and older, residual from a, uh, an ancient seabed, shallow seabed. Uh, now, what we're looking at is a system that, as groundwater intrudes into that system, limestone begins to dissolve. That's how caves are formed. That's how these sinkholes were formed over time. Well today we're going to go as much as 15 nautical miles offshore and we're going to dive down into 350 feet of water. We're going to retrieve some sensors that we deployed last year. So we should, if everything went right, we should have about a year's worth of data that we can begin to understand whether or not we can really measure the amount of water that's uh, flowing into these deep systems. Well, this is an area where there are a lot of sinkholes. We've counted about uh, 10 of them. Uh, that are that definitely have a undefined depression in the bottom. We have Steve Constant, University of Michigan School of Natural Resources instrumentation expert, Kyle Beadle, University of Michigan Naval Architecture and Marine Engineer graduate, in addition to Captain Travis. Both of them will be operating the ROV and sensors as well as the retrieval mechanism. We're headed to uh, our first station, which is called the Isolated Sinkhole. We'll be retrieving two sets of sensors from that station. Maybe give another shout, neutral. Let's say head down and hopefully we'll stumble on it right away. The sinkhole is about 55 meters by about 35 meters. With the scanning sonar, we should see a bright object and there's a float with air in it. The air is less dense than the water around it, and so that you should get a strong signal off of that. So you're just kind of making your way around the edge of it. Yeah, you can see the groundwater. Yeah, so you can see the quagga mussels here, and then there are none down here. And so that's the influence of the groundwater. There was a little bit of haziness there uh, from the difference between the density of the groundwater and the, and the fresh water that's surrounding it. Go back down. This is a uh, current measuring sensor that uses tilt. So it has an accelerometer in it. So higher flow will tilt it over more and more and more. Uh, lower flow, less. So the tilt correlates directly with the flow of the water. This is from uh, the sensor that we had deployed in the isolated sinkhole, the one we just retrieved. So that's a year's worth of data. Okay, we have it sighted. Yeah, there you closed all the way. You ready to come up? Beautiful. So we just hooked on to the float that has a number of temperature strings pulled tight over a five meter distance. You're measuring temperature at multiple levels so you can see how the groundwater is uh, filling and refilling based on the currents that sweep it away sometimes. We are at Middle Island Sinkhole, which has sort of the north end of it sheared off by glacial activity. There's sort of a, a bowl shaped area there down within the sinkhole and water fills that up and then spills over a ledge out into the wider area of the sinkhole, the wider area being the area that we call uh, the arena. We're gonna, so we'll deploy the sensors right on the wall between the alcove and the arena. So we can measure that flow coming out of there. just upstream from them. Yeah, okay, you're gonna drop it right there. Wow, this is too easy. Oh, actually, you know what? 
Can you pick it back up? The Great Lakes are a large dynamic system and the water levels are changing continually. They're on their way up now. Uh, the reason it is important to know that potentially small contribution from groundwater is that even an inch of uh, water level change can make the difference in the way that freighters, uh, freighter companies load their vessels and that means money to them. So we want to be very accurate in how we develop these models.